Hey folks, Todd Coleman here with the Aerospace Structure Series. This lecture is a supplement to Lecture 12. It's on how to figure out the effective diameter of a particular member when you have multiple members clamped together in a preloaded joint. Let's suppose we have four members bolted together with a preloaded bolt. Okay, we take a look at this. We've got four members here. Here's some uh, typical kinds of thicknesses. What we're going to do is fan our load out from the edge of each washer at 45 degrees. So we're going to fan out the load from the edge of the washer. Remember, in industry, if the washer is thin and wide, you probably want to fan out through the washer from the edge of the bolt head. But if you have a thicker washer and it's not too much larger than the bolt head, then it's a it's appropriate to fan out from the washer and use the entire washer as one of those clamped surfaces as we talked about in uh, in the lecture. So what we're going to do is fan this out at our uh, imagined or uh, assumed cone angle and I recommend 45 degrees. 30 degrees is more conservative and uh, and yet the reason 45 is convenient is we already have a number of approximations that we're making and so keeping our analysis simple and achievable so that we get accurate results within the limitations of our assumptions is very wise. We're going to focus out at that 45 degrees both from the top washer and the bottom washer. That's going to give us two choices for critical diameter. Now as you can see each critical diameter is uh, different. So at the middle of plate one, our effective diameter would be right here at the midplane of that plate, whatever that, that's the smallest. You, you'll notice we also have another, another, uh, another cone angle coming from the bottom. It's irrelevant because that's much larger. The second place is also obviously going to be right here. That's the effective diameter. The third plate is going to be right about there. And the last plate is going to be down here. Now, You'll notice here the key to calculating this diameter is to figure out what is the effective depth for each member. So let's just say we're focused on member three. What we're looking for, the, the, what will determine that critical diameter, that effective diameter, will be its relative position. So you'll notice this position is that deep from the upper washer and it is this deep from the lower washer. So if we just calculate that, we see that first one is going to be, let's go ahead and I'll just use text. So coming from, let's go ahead and we'll call the depth L. So that L parameter uh, coming from the upper cone angle is just going to be the thickness of our first plate plus the thickness of our second plate plus, and let's make that, fix that so it looks better, plus, and now we're going into the third plate, it's going to be half of that thickness. So that's going to be 0 0.30 over 2. That is the depth to this, the midplane from the upper cone angle. The depth coming from the lower cone angle is going to be the bottom plate thickness, 1.8 plus the, sec uh, the third plate, which is 03 over 2. And we see that coming from the upper plate, that is 0 0.36 inches. And coming from the lower plate, that's 1.92 inches. Now it's obvious that that cone, that, that depth, coming from the upper one is smaller. And remember, we're going to be fanning out by that amount, whatever that depth is. If we use a 45 degrees, it's going to be that amount on both sides. So actually, we're going to select this one as our, as our critical value. And then we're going to calculate our effective diameter for plate three. This is all for plate three we're talking here. So our effective diameter from plate number three will be the diameter of that washer that that's coming from. 
and let's just say that's 1.2 inches, and then we're going to be fanning out by twice, by two times, right? Because each side, whatever that depth is, we're going to be fanning out tangent of that alpha times that distance. But in our case, we're assuming a 45 degree angle, so it's just twice that distance. So it's two times that 0.36 inch depth is how big that's going to get. And when we calculate that, we're going to find that that's 1.920 inches. That will be the effective diameter that we use to calculate the stiffness of that assumed cylinder for that third plate. And we can calculate each of the others in a similar fashion. So our key procedure is to figure out which washer is are we closest to, is the center of each plate closest to, and we can use this proximity factor, which I'm calling L here, to calculate that. Some of these, it's going to be obvious. It's obvious that plate 1 is closer to the upper washer. It's obvious that plate 2 is closer to the upper washer. Not quite so obvious for plate 3. Is it from the upper or lower? And so fanning that out, figuring out the nearest plate, and then using that dimension, that depth dimension, remember we're fanning out by twice that amount in each one, or if you want to do use a different cone angle, tangent of that angle times two, two times tangent of the angle times that depth parameter, added to whatever the washer diameter was that you're fanning out from. That is the key to doing this correctly every time. I hope you find this helpful. Watch this and again and again. I have another video which also covers this. Good luck and enjoy.